Greetings, my name is Rosalind Cawthon and I'm excited to be here with I Mix What I Like. I've been in Baltimore now for about 12 years. Um, I really love it here, I love the city. I came to the area actually to go to Towson University, which is strange, but I came to go to Towson um, in their MFA, Master of Fine Arts and Theater program. But it wasn't about Towson. It wasn't about getting my master's degree. It was about Baltimore City. Um, I came here for a visit and I had such a good time. There was something about the feeling of the city, the pulse of the city, the energy that was here. It was lit. I mean, it was live. I was meeting other artists who were interested in a lot of the same work that I was interested in. Um, I felt like the art scene here was very authentic. I didn't want to go to like New York or LA or one of those type of places that are establishment type cities for the arts. Baltimore felt right. Like I could build a community here, but also keep myself busy working in the arts um, on a professional and community level. So after I got my grad degree, I just kind of stuck around. I did some work at Morgan State University. I did some work at Towson University where I graduated. Um, and then I started doing some work at Center Stage Theater. Um, but the key thing here that really helped me hone my skills and, and prepare me to be the artist that I am today uh, was I started a theater company um, called Kaumba. And Kaumba was about I don't, we were at Towson and there were a group of black students, black artists that weren't getting seen. We weren't getting looks, we weren't getting any work, we were getting very few callbacks to be on the main stage productions. We were kind of like on the outskirts of the theater department in Towson. And so I just kind of did a survey for a class that was to all of the African American students saying, how do you feel about being here at Towson? Um, are your needs being met? Um, let's talk about it. So after the survey was over, the information I got was, was so great, collected some great data. And then I started meeting with those same folks, those same students who were in the department feeling marginalized and said, you know what, let's do our own work. Like, I have this mantra of like, don't sit around and wait for someone to give you an opportunity to be on stage, to do your art, to, to, to mix your music or to do your painting. Don't wait. Make the opportunity for yourself. If it's not being presented, you got to make that opportunity. And what's great about Baltimore is the type of city where you can do just that. Like, you don't have to know this person to know that person to know that person. You know, I just kind of went up to Baltimore Theater Project and up on Preston Street and started talking to them about producing shows there. Um, then I got connected um, through Bashi Rose and Femula Wall and some other people to Creative Alliance. And so Creative Alliance started to support a lot of my work in those early years along with Theater Project. Um, I've done work at the UB Blake Cultural Arts Center, um, at Arena Players, um, at Morgan, at Towson, all over. So just being able to come to a city, be here for a couple years, put in the work that's necessary, make the networks and connections that are necessary, I felt very fulfilled <clears throat> and supported and that the work is really meaningful here. It feels authentic. People call this work that we do all sorts of things. Um, art for social change, uh, art for social justice, um, healing in the arts, all sorts of monikers and names that it comes under. Well, really for me, it was inspired by the work of the artists of the Black Arts Movement. This idea of taking issues, problems, things that are plaguing our community and using the arts to further explore them or using the arts to make statements or using the arts to make, uh, to, to, to ask questions, to encourage audience members and community members to ask questions about our status here in America as black people, um, about the oppression that we faced historically as black people. And so being able to draw upon the inspiration of those artists in the black arts movement and around that time, um, just really kind of exploded and ignited this energy in me. Sometimes it feels like being an artist um, can be like a little selfish. So I'm over here, I'm doing my art, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Um, people are clapping and applauding and laughing and having a good time and we're doing a play 
mm-hmm. right? Even the word play, we're dressing up, becoming characters as a play. So I started thinking someone who's an activist, and I've always been involved in uh, political issues, even when, you know, my time in South Carolina and North Carolina, I grew up, I lived in Charleston for several years. I was very politically active there. Um, I wanted to find a way to combine this two sides of myself, this activist, political activist who was going down to Atlanta and participating in protests and all these sorts of things um, with my artistic self because I know in my heart I'm an artist and that's what I've been called to do. That's my talent. Um, That's what I've been gifted with uh, from the most high and from the universe. So how could I combine what I thought was really important fighting against the oppression and the inequities that our people were facing as black people in America but do it through my art? Um, And I saw how in the Black Arts Movement they did that. And so people like Amiri Baraka and Sonia Sanchez and The Last Poets, and then coming down even a little bit further, one of my um, strongest influence, Ntozake Shange, who was blending. What I love most about these artists was not just that they were making a political social statement with their art, but that their art was out of the box. It was it was different. It is different. It's unique. It's collaborative. It's anti-establishment. It's we're not going to produce it in the same way that we produce it on Hollywood or Broadway. We're going to be raw. You know, we're going to um, find the best way to tell the stories and ask the questions of our people that we need to without the grandeur and artifice of what professional theater has become where people are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on sets and costumes and all this for a one-time show or for a run of a show and then it goes in the freaking trash can after that to be recycled so this idea of being resourceful of using the community of using what we have of telling stories through poetry theater dance visual arts music now what they call multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary aesthetic in the arts. We've been doing that shit. Like we've been doing that. We've been combining the drums with dance and poetry and the griot and getting the community involved in what they call audience participation. No, we do community arts. We do healing arts. It is more than just a career. It is more than just something outside of ourselves that we aspire to. The arts and the culture is within us. It's our daily way of being. It's our meditation. It's our way of walking, our way of talking. It's all art and culture from within when it comes from um, an African perspective. And so, yeah, I continue to be inspired by the Black Arts Movement. We were able to do a series uh, with the Creative Alliance called Fire in the Belly. And I would say that was one of the highlights of my career so far to this point. Um, By producing Fire in the Belly, myself, um, along with Bashi Rose, we were able to bring in some of the top national known artists um, in the Black Arts Movement. So we brought in Amiri Baraka, and we brought in Sonia Sanchez, and we brought in The Last Poets. And we had three different nights. Um, The first night was Amiri Baraka. He was there, we did Slave Ship. And to be able to do the play, his seminal work, Slave Ship, for him, while he's sitting on the front row, where we could reach out and touch him, was amazing. And the brother was real down to earth. Like, he sat with us before the show and had pizza and beer and talked to us about um, just everything that he had been doing with the Spirit House players and everything that he had been doing in Newark, New Jersey. It was just like, it, it was surreal sitting there with Amiri Baraka. Then we did the show and then he performed. Um, he performed a couple of his pieces. Um, Somebody Blew Up America. I mean, in the place you could hear a pin drop. You could hear a pin drop when our great ancestor was up on that stage reading his poetry, engaging and connecting with the people. So I'll never forget that. Um, then the second night we had the last poets. We had lots of drummers in the building. We had some local hip hop artists, some local spoken word artists. And that exchange between the old and the new, right? the older generation of poets and their way of working and being and the new generation of poets and griots and their way of working and being and seeing them share together it it was just it was so much inspiration um and energy in the room that night when the last poets was there it just felt like that whole room at the creative alliance would just like lift off the ground and just take off and then um finally we ended with sonia sanchez and we had an original play that had been written by the brothers at the correctional institute in jessup and then we took that play and put it on actors who were based here in baltimore and it was just it was so powerful um At the time, I do believe our great leader, Eddie Conway, he was still behind bars and he was able to call in on the phone and have a conversation with the audience about what was going on um, with political prisoners. 
Sonia Sanchez spoke after we did the original play and did some of her poetry. So man, that Fire in the Belly series was something that, that I'll never forget. And it brought this type of um, energy to Baltimore and, and energy and collaboration to our work. Um, and I was able to speak with and have a little bit of time with Mr. Baraka two times after that Fire in the Belly series. And he always remembered me. We always talk, you know, Baltimore loved Amiri Baraka and he was here for the Baltimore Book Festival and other events. Um, so that was amazing. I was able to meet their great ancestor, um, Frances Cress Welsing, who her work has always inspired me and informed me and made the world make sense to me. Like when I thought I was crazy, I read her book and realized I'm not crazy. All these other oh, motherfuckers out here crazy. So it was nice to have that assurance um, and, and to meet Dr. Francis Cress Welsing. And uh, since Fire in the Belly, I've produced Slave Ship twice. Um, and it's nothing like directing and producing Slave Ship. Out of all the plays I've ever directed and produced, there is nothing like working with a group of actors to carry them through the slave ship experience, to even for a little bit try to embody what our ancestors went through in the Middle Passage. Wow, I mean, we start off with just kind of rocking, like laying down, as like pretending that we're shackled and rocking. And then we go to groans and moans and screams and cries. And man, that rehearsal process is something else we leave. Every time I've done that show, every single rehearsal just like spit, just like spit emotionally. It's a very physical piece, so physically spit. And um, audiences have responded well to it, you know. Um, that history, that pain, the torture that our ancestors went through, it's still in our DNA. And I think that we're still struggling to make sense of what happened to our people and we're still fighting against the oppression and the trickle down effect of what happened to our people during slavery and it's still one of those things that no one really wants to talk about even though we have all these Hollywood movies coming out about it people still need healing even after all these years so I just I give thanks for the Black Arts Movement. I give thanks for Amir Baraka and Sonia Sanchez and the Last Poets and Intizaki Shange and 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 I know I'm getting a little later and Adrian Kennedy and you know moving on forward through the times of people who are still using their art to fight.